on, share this broadcast, invite your followers. This is going to be powerful. This is going to be glorious. This is going to be mighty and life changing. This is going to change your life, saints. I'm telling you, everybody, share this broadcast. Invite your followers and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. Conference October the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. Dallas, Texas, the heart of downtown. October the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. I'm live releasing the power of God, the glory of God in Dallas, Texas. Don't miss it, it's free to all. Blessings to you. Greetings to everybody. Let's get straight into this mighty revelation. Saints, um, every single day you want to go after the Lord and get that sound wisdom that's in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7. The uh, wisdom in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 is very important. Um, there's certain uh, things that you, you're going to have to let um, the Lord have permission you're going to let him have to have permission. He got to have permission to give you certain levels of knowledge that you're going to need for your productivity, your fruitfulness, your decisions, your thoughts, your decision making. So every day you go after uh, Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 because something powerful in the text, it says that he stores up sound wisdom. So when something is stored up, that means that it's not, um, it's not operating for you is stored up to operate for you. So you got to operate in pursuing it. 
in order for it to operate for you. But it's there for you. It's waiting for you. It's assigned to you. It's purpose for you. It's um, it's designated for you. But you have to go after it. It's stored up. So you imagine how many decisions you make sometimes and you didn't tap into the stored up wisdom. The stored up wisdom is for you, but you never tapped into it. Think about it. Think about all the decisions that you make or all the thoughts that you think that is apart from the sound wisdom that was stored up for you. Think about all the words that you speak or all the relationships that you go into without the sound wisdom operating on your behalf. So, so it's major. Think about all the food you eat. Think about all the places you travel to without the sound wisdom operating. Think about all the conversations you have without the sound wisdom that's stored up. So it's very important. It's very important because I pulled from the sound wisdom for this teaching that I'm about to give you. So I'm not telling you something I don't know. I really know this without a shadow of a doubt. Daughter, let me speak to you here. Let me speak to you here. Let me just talk to you. I understand that you're saying that, that there's a, um, is a, a storm in the Bahamas, right? But instead of me step in and override what you could do, I want you to hear me. I, I stay in Texas. We have had several storms that have come through Texas this year, very heavily. Hurricanes, tornadoes. But when it comes to my region, I make that storm bow down to me. I talk to the storm. Don't let the spirit of fear grip you because it can happen. This human flesh, when it hears stuff, it get nervous. But speak to the storm. Speak to the storm and command the storm, peace be still, just like Jesus did. I'm telling you as a living witness, because you, you, you got to hear somebody that does it. You know what I'm saying? I can just talk to you from the Bible and it can be empty words, but I'm telling you that I actually do it. And it works for me. So I'm transferring authority to you. And I'm telling you to speak to the storm in the Bahamas. And you speak to it and tell it what, where, 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 what it should do. You tell it to peace be still. See, Jesus, and I'm doing what Jesus did. Remember what Jesus did? Jesus, um, he spoke for that storm to peace be still. But he really didn't want to do that. He wanted the disciples to rise up and do it. So there are matters that will come and it's good that it comes because it, it, it surrounds you into the place that you have no choice but to come into your divine authority and you want that. So, so what's going on with the Bahamas um, is going on with the Bahamas, but speak to the storm, speak to the storm. This is your authority as a child of God. You have family in the Bahamas. You have surroundings in the Bahamas. You speak to the storm. You tell it what to do. You have that authority as a child of God. This earth was created to obey you. Storms was created to obey you as a child of God, as the anointed ones. So you speak to things. Don't let it speak to you. Because when it speaks to you, it's going to make you fearful. It's going to make you nervous. It's going to make you fret. It's going to make you worried. It's going to make you... Um, wonder what's going to happen. No, no, no. You decide what's going to happen. You tell that storm, peace be still, and it will obey you. I've had several storms in Texas, and none of those storms hit. And it's no lie. You can look on the weather reports and see that there was heavy hurricanes and tornadoes coming towards um, the Texas region, and none of those storms hit. All them storms shut their mouth because I'm here. I can't speak for other people. I know I'm here. And I, I, while I'm here, I'm going to dominate the region that I'm in. And I'm not going to let no principality put no fear on me. And uh, principalities, they know 
when you carry in God rank and God God's authority and God's power, and they have to bow down to that. So so that's that's why we live our life for Jesus and we give Jesus our all because when the time comes, it it benefits us. Then we can move like Jesus and those evil spirits. God listen to us. Saints, I don't get worried when 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 they when they call for tornado. We just had a, a warning for for um, a storm in Texas again. I don't get worried about those things because I I will dominate the atmosphere I'm in. So have that mindset. The Bible said, "Let this mind be in you, that was also in Christ Jesus." It's not pride; it's power. You gotta get the different differentiating factor between the two. It's not pride; it's power. So some people will talk to you and say, well, how, how could you say that? You're not God. I am God. That's what the word of God said. Ye are God. So, so however you want to pit it, you can pit a small G or a big G. It's still God. The minute that you stop thinking that you are God, the minute that the devil going to take authority over you and pit you in the bondage of fear, pit you in the bondage of, of um, anxiety, and pit you in the bondage of atmospheric events. But when you get the revelation of who you are, you can talk like who you are and you can release the power of God and the angels of God will back you. Storms don't just happen. When storms are happening, it, it, it is a series of things. A nation can be underneath judgment because of the sin. A nation can be underneath uh, judgment because of their uh, defiance against God. But remember what happened in Abraham day. Remember when the Abraham kept saying, if there be 50 righteous, remember the Lord said, I will spare the land just for the 50. So when storms hit and things hit, even if that land is underneath judgment, God will spare areas and regions for your sake because you are the righteous. And I, I believe that you are the righteous. I believe that you can speak to it in your region, use your authority and speak to that daggone storm. Speak to that daggone storm. God loves when women and men get in predicaments where you have to use your divine authority. He loves when you get into predicaments where you have to speak to things. He loved that because that's what he training you to do for the rest of your life. What happened when you get a child and your child gets sick and the doctor talking about your child going to die? You got to speak to that child. You can't wait for the doctor. You can't wait for medicine. Huh? You got to speak to that child. The Holy Spirit wants you to learn how to speak to things and govern. Don't let things speak to you because that's the minute that you're going to be raped by demons. Don't let no demons rape your authority or rape your dominion. Don't let no evil spirits rape you. When you let things speak to you, it can rape you. It can take away your dignity. It can take away your dominion. It can take away your deliverance. But you got to speak to things. When you see your bank account and it's bothering you, I'm supposed to have more money in there. Speak to the bank account. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree abundance and abundant life in this bank account. I decree money cometh to me in this bank account. I decree I have money to live the life that God want me to live and to help the gospel go forth and to be a blessing to many nations. I speak to my bank account. Speak to things. Remember, God is showing Ezekiel the dry bones, but he's not showing Ezekiel the dry bones for the dry bones to speak to Ezekiel. He's showing Ezekiel the dry bones for Ezekiel to speak to the dry bones. If he let the dry bones speak to him, what he's going to do is he's going to lose faith in God. If he lets the dry bones speak to him, He's going to lose his authority, his dignity as a prophet of God. But when God asks him a question, it is to activate you. It is to activate him. When the Lord asks you a question, it is to activate you. Sometimes, daughter, you'll be sitting down and God will speak questions to you. Are you happy with your situation? He's speaking 
questions to you to activate you. When he asks Cain, where's your brother? It's to activate Cain, to let Cain know you just murdered him. You just did something wrong. You just stepped into a demonic quality. That was not the will of the father. The Lord uses questions to activate you, to get you to be quickened of what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Remember the four lepers, they asked the questions, why sit here and die? They was poor. They was lepers. They had no food. They had no money. They said, why sit here and die? When they said that question, it activated them into the wisdom of God of where to find the riches, the wealth, because God chased that army out and they got all those riches and wealth. All that money came into their hands. But if they never asked the question, why sit here and die, they would have stayed sitting there. Now, one thing that you want to catch is it says, why sit here and die? So the place that they're sitting is in death. They're in a gate of hell. On this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They're in a gate of hell. They're in death. Why sit here and die? So the place that they are sitting in the spirit realm is separated from God. It's separated from God's will. It's separated from God's plan. It's separated from what God desires for their life. So they said, why? What's the reason? What's the cause? What's the root spirit that's keeping me here? Why am I permitting this to happen and it's not God's plan? Why am I choosing this level of finances and it's not God's plan? Why am I choosing this pattern of thinking and it's not God's plan? Why am I choosing this health condition and it's not God's plan? Why sit here and die? Why am I choosing toxic relationships and it's not God's plan? Why am I choosing to talk to people that's destroying my faith, destroying my focus, destroying my mind, destroying my obedience to God, and it's not God's plan? So why sit here? They realized that they was not seated in the heavenly places in Christ. They was not in the position that they was created to be in. Why sit here and die? So this seat can only make them more separated from God's will. Because dying is separation from God. This seat is making them more separated from God's plan. So they said, why sit here and die? Then they step into abundance. Because when you realize that you're in the wrong seat, it quickens you with the wisdom to get to the right seat. And when you get to the right seat, the right things begin to happen. When you get to the right seat, abundance start manifesting. Joy start taking place. Health enters your body. Happiness enters your soul. Wisdom enters your decisions. Sanctification enters your company. You start being sanctified. Remember John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your word. The word of God sanctifies you. It sets you apart. It takes you away from the wrong crowd, the wrong company, the wrong conversations. So speak to your storm. Use your authority and, and recognize those situations that God let happen in your life as an opportunity for you to speak to things and command things to change. Now, saints, I want you to see some, something. If we go to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter, um, chapter 2, 2 Kings chapter 2, and if we go to verse... Um, Verse 12. Look what it says here. It said, Elisha saw it. Or uh, let's go to verse 11. Second, uh, Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. Let's go here. Now, this is very powerful. It says, and it came to pass. As it came to pass.
as they stood there and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Now, something that I want you to catch in this text is very powerful. It says, as they stood still and talked. I want you to see this. While they're talking, the chariot of fire appears. It's only while they're talking so child of God, let me just tell you something. When you learn how to talk spiritually, you let the Lord direct your words. You cause chariots of fire to appear. You cause angelic ministry to intensify. When you know how to talk. See, if you studied what happened to Zacharias in Luke 1, he didn't know how to talk. What did he say? He said, can the Lord let my wife have a baby at old age? Watch, when he talks, he's stopping the chariot. The chariot is carrying the power of God, the fire of God, the glory of God, the promise of God. When he does not know how to talk, He's stopping the chariot. So the angel pits him on mute. I believe it was the angel Gabriel. Pit him on mute because he's saying what's going to stop the chariot. He does not know how to talk. Now, saints, in the spirit realm, God is so sensitive that when Sarah laughed, God saw it. Remember that? She did not talk, but her laugh spoke. Her laugh was talking. And God saw her unbelief when she laughed. That's how it's so sensitive in the spirit realm. When you're walking with God, you got to be cautious of these things. Because God could hear your laughter of doubt. He can hear you when you're talking in your emotions. Because when you're discouraged, you're telling God, I do not believe that you're going to do it. When you're weary, you're telling God, I don't want to wait anymore because I don't think that it's really going to come to pass. That's why when you get discouraged, yes, there's a demonic area of that discouragement. But there's also a God area of that discouragement where he begins to deal with you and he whoop you. And he say, how dare you? How dare you act like I'm up here, some small God? How dare you? So God check you in the midst of that. So in depression, yes, it's demonic. You don't just get depressed because you're going through some medical condition. Man have made that a medical condition. That's a demon. Depression is a demon. It's an evil spirit. It's a witchcraft spirit. You can't serve the Lord with gladness while you're depressed. So it's a witchcraft spirit. It'll make you rebel against God or rebel against the attitude that God wants. Because do you know that there are some depressed people that do do what God says? But they're in rebellion, not in their deed. They're in rebellion in their attitude while doing the deed. You caught that? They're not in rebellion in the action. They're rebellion in the way that they're acting while doing the action. See, saints, acting and action are two different realms. Action is what you do. But acting is the attitude in which you do it. So saints, 
You could be doing the will of God and the Lord can still come to you and say, why are you acting like this? You're doing God's will. But God is not looking at the will being done. He's looking at the attitude while the will is being done. So, so now you know why Psalm 100 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Because when you serve him, that's the action. Gladness, that's the acting. Glory to God. So we see right here, 2 Kings chapter 2. Verse 11, it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. So while they're talking, the chariot of fire appears. So know how to talk to activate angelic ministry activate the chariots of God in your life because these chariots are carrying the power, the fire, the promise, the manifestations of God in the earth for the generation that you're in, for the lifestyle that you have. Look at what it says. And, he, and there appeared a chariot of fire. Now remember this. There was not two chariots. There was a chariot. I'm about to say something that's going to shock you. This is so powerful. It says a chariot of fire and horses of fire. Now these are prophetic horses. And parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. You notice Elisha did not go to paradise. Why is it that Elijah does not go to paradise? Elijah does not go to paradise. He does not go anywhere, but he goes to heaven. Remember Jesus told that man, you'll be with me in paradise. So why does Elijah go to paradise? I want you to hear me very clearly. As a prophet, Elijah is a God. Elijah is going where gods go. Heaven. If you look at it, saints, the thief was not in the God realm. The thief was in the repentance realm. Just getting free from God's wrath. Just getting free from sin. So Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise. I want you to hear this. You notice Jesus does not go to heaven. Until he rises from the dead. Because when he rises from the dead, he's validifying the God realm. He's validifying Godship. So he tells the woman, don't touch me. Until I ascend. I have, or I have not yet ascended to my father. The father in heaven. Because that's where gods go. They go to heaven. So, Elijah does not go to paradise. He goes to heaven because he's in the God realm. He's a God in the spirit. Remember, people were going to paradise. Huh? Huh? So why isn't he in paradise? He's in heaven. Watch this. So, 
And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, saints, I want you to see this here. What does the whirlwind represent? The whirlwind, re the whirlwind represents atmosphere. Every child of God got to learn how to move with the whirlwind for your life. The whirlwind of heaven. The atmosphere of heaven for your life. You have to learn how to move with the whirlwind of heaven for your life attitude for your mind for your company for your connections for your associations the whirlwind is an atmospheric realm with the with the father that keeps you in godliness now If you look at Daniel, Daniel was moving with this whirlwind. That's why he has an excellent spirit. Because he's moving with the whirlwind of heaven. If you look at Abigail, remember? Abigail, when David wants to kill Nabal. Remember, Abigail comes out. And the Bible says she has the spirit of wisdom and understanding. And she calms him down. She's moving with the whirlwind of heaven. People that move with the whirlwind of heaven have the, the power to make peace on earth. They have the power to be mature. They have the power to create God's order in situations. When people have the whirlwind of heaven operating on them, they do not settle for drama. They look for solutions. And if there's no solutions, they dust their feet off and keep it moving. Remember what the word of the Lord said? It said Jesus told them, if you go to a place and there's no peace, dust your feet off and keep on going. That's the whirlwind of heaven. The whirlwind of heaven is when you're, you're able to create peace. Remember Jesus said, bless out the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, saints, what was Jesus say if you go to a house and they don't give you peace or they don't receive peace? It say, dust your feet off. What does peace mean? It means wholeness. And how do you receive wholeness? Remember what Jesus told the man that had the infirmity 38 years? Will thou be made whole? So wholeness means that you let Jesus fix you. So when Jesus told the disciples, if you go to a place and there's no peace, dust your feet off. That means if you go to a person and they don't want Jesus to fix them, leave them alone and keep on moving on with your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't this glorious? See, you got word of God backing you on this. It's telling you if you go to someone and they don't want to be made whole, if they don't want peace, if they don't want the peace of God, if they don't want the wholeness of God, if they don't want Jesus to fix them, Keep on moving on with your life. Go forward. So you unlock that whirlwind of heaven on your life when you're praising God, you're thanking God, you're sowing seeds into the gospel, you're honoring the Father with your substance. You step into the whirlwind of heaven when you walk in forgiveness towards people, when you forgive them, when you don't hold on to bitterness and try to get revenge. You're moving in the whirlwind of heaven. You're moving in the whirlwind of heaven. That whirlwind of heaven is on you. When you can submit yourself unto God, submit yourself unto someone that God has sent to your life, your man of God, your divine king, someone, your, your, your high priest, the person that God is using to give you knowledge, to give you wisdom. You're moving with the whirlwind of heaven when you are serving when you're solving problems, when you're being a solution to things on the earth, you're in the whirlwind of heaven.
Consistency is the whirlwind of heaven. Diligence keeps you in the whirlwind of heaven. That means that nothing can stop your servanthood. Nothing can stop your focus, your worship, your honor, your patience, your obedience, your willingness, your attitude. Nothing can stop it. When nothing can stop it, that is a revelation that you have the whirlwind of heaven on you. So look at where it says with Elijah. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. By a whirlwind. By an atmosphere. See, he has the right atmosphere to step into heaven. This whirlwind is around him. He's pleasing the father to step into this place. Saints, what happened to Enoch? Enoch got taken up by a whirlwind. What did the Bible say? Enoch walked with God and was no more. He got taken up by how? The whirlwind. The whirlwind took Enoch up. That atmosphere was so strong of heaven that he had to go there. Because this earth realm was so corrupt with violence and wickedness. People ignoring God. And now he goes into the whirlwind. Now let's look at this, saints. This is so powerful. It says that the ch there was a chariot of fire that appeared. One chariot is not more than one. I want you to see this. One chariot appears. Not two. Not three. Not four. Only one. Now, let's look at this. So this is Elijah's story. In Elijah's story, he only has one chariot. Now, let's look at 2 Kings chapter two, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Now, watch this. This is what I want you to hear. The mountain was full of horses and chariots. Look at this, saints. It says that the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Now, this is more than one chariot. Saints, are you catching this? Wow. Saints, he has more than one chariot. And Elijah, when the Elijah was about to leave, the Bible said there was only one chariot that came. Now, how is Elisha opening up this man's eyes through the prayer? And this man sees all these angels. And now when, 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 Elijah is on the scene. There's only one angel that appears. How is it that Elijah has one? But Elisha has many.
satisfy your soul. Oh, let have the things that hold you. 